Welcome to our night dive here at Montage in Laguna Beach. Here is Brian taking a picture of the drone, taking his picture. Hello, I'm Phil. That's me on the left, and my dive buddy Brian on the right. Hey, we're about to go dive this reef after the sun sets. Before that happens, let's take a look at the beach, ocean, and reef. As you can see, it's about an hour before sunset on a beautiful California day. The ocean is extremely calm, so we're in luck. This should be a great night dive, and we won't have much of any real surf to worry about on our entry or exit. In addition, the last few days have also been calm, so as you can see from looking down at the reefs, the underwater visibility is going to be excellent. This is the reef where we will drop down to start our night dive. You can spot some of the sand channels where we will be swimming on our way through and around the reefs. I'm turning the drone around to look back toward our entry point. Next, I'll show you the bay we swim across before reaching the reefs. We don't dive this section at the start of the dive because it's mostly sand and just very low reefs. We do a reef entry on this dive jumping off into the water, though we will swim around the reef to the sand beach you see in the distance to make our exit at the end of the dive. However, before we get wet, let's check out some harbor seals. Hey Ralph, look at this strange bird. Yeah, that's an ugly dude. He's bugging me. What do you think I should do? Just ignore him. Maybe the bird brain will fly away. Yeah, I'd do something, but I'm just too comfortable. Hey, stupid bird! Fly away! I think that did it! He's leaving! Now I can go back to my much-deserved rest. The sun is finally setting, so it's time to head back to the car and get our dive gear on. We'll enter the water when it's completely dark. A single dive light is enough for a diver to point around to see things. Right off the bat, Brian has spotted a lobster and grabs the bug for fun. This happens to be a female. You can tell by the large swimmerettes at the bottom of her tail that she will use to hide and protect her eggs later on. Brian is quite enamored with her. He uses his hand to show that her shell is plenty long enough to be a legal lobster. Too bad we're in a protected marine preserve where you can't take anything. So he lets her go on her way. Here you see a slightly smaller male lobster out hunting scraps of food. Lobsters are nocturnal feeders, only coming out of their holes at night time to feed. Moving along the reefs, Brian spots a grouping of abalone and points them out. So I move down to take a shot of them clinging to the rocky reef. This is one, and then over here there's another grouping of three more. At one point, abalone were extremely rare to see, but now they are growing abundant in the marine preserve. Brian enters this short swim through, and up ahead, we spot a small blacksmith fish. Due to us supplying all the light on a night dive, this blacksmith is particularly colorful. Moving further along the reef, Brian locates a short tunnel going through to the next channel. This tunnel doesn't really qualify as a full cave since it is so short and doesn't branch out. However, Swimming through formations like this always seems to attract divers. After checking out the entrance and exit to make sure it is safe enough, he heads on through, and I will follow him to the other side of this reef.
On exiting the tunnel, Ryan spots something on the sand ripples at the bottom of this new channel, a small stingray. These little critters get their name from a small stinger located on their tail just before the tail fit. Round stingrays, like this one, are abundant off of Southern California in depths up to 70 feet, though we are only in about 25 feet of water right now. This little guy seems unconcerned about me or my massive dive lights and merrily goes on his way. He's seeking food in the sand, like such things as marine worms or small sand crabs. He flutters the sides of his body to propel himself along the sand, steering with his tail fin. Here I give him a gentle touch on his body, just so I can see him swim off at a faster pace. My dive buddy now sees a grouping of lobsters and decides to have some fun. So he spreads his arms around the group and attempts to get them to all panic and fly off in different directions. Mission accomplished. Here is another example of a good sized lobster out wandering the reefs in search of food. I come right down to his head and get a good shot of him moving off to go back to his hole now that that big light and bothersome diver is interrupting his dinner. Listen up guys, this is the plan. You, cut around behind him. Understood. You two, break right and left. Aye, aye. Carl, you drop to the bottom and attack him from below. Ready, break. Banzai! Huh? Where'd he go? Swimming along the reef, we see a group of colorful gorgonians which are filter feeding to capture drifting plankton. They are a colonial species that attaches to the rock. Each individual polyp is a distinct animal. Together they secrete calcium that forms the structure of the colony. Hey, Phil, come check out this white croaker. We often have to swim across sections of sand, but there are interesting things to see out here. White croakers hunt a variety of fishes, squid, shrimp, octopus, worms, small crabs, clams, and other items, but not Phil. Here is another sand dweller. This is a pair of small crabs out on a dinner date. Too bad they ran into a couple of curious divers. Don't worry, they can get back to business after we leave. This one gets a bit testy when Brian picks him up, and he grabs Brian's thumb. However, we leave him unharmed and continue on our way. That brings us back to our exit point, so it's time to ascend to the surface. I just love night diving. It's colorful, and you see nocturnal creatures which you don't see during daytime. <laughs> 